Trusting people and bringing them into your life can either be tremendously rewarding or a terrible mistake. A determined woman on the path to a successful future, a friend that was considered more than a little creepy by those who knew him, and an unexpected reaction during a news interview. All this and more on this episode of Seriously Strange Caught on Camera. Lauren Giddings had a mind and work ethic that would inspire all those around her. Lauren was known by friends and family as an overachiever that strived for success in her academics. Aside from her studies, Lauren was an athletic 27-year-old that was popular amongst her peers and was a family-oriented woman that deeply cared for the loved ones in her life. Her sister, Sarah, was able to recall times in their childhood when Lauren would carry textbooks with her wherever they went. On May 14, 2011, Lauren graduated from Mercer University Walter F. George School of Law in Macon, Georgia, earning her a Juris Doctorate degree that would guide her in attaining a career in criminal defense. Lauren sought opportunity in leading her peers and was the president of the Federalist Society during her studies in Mercer University. A life of hard work and success was awaiting the determined law graduate, or so she thought. From 2008 to 2011, Lauren resided in a small, quiet apartment complex near her university. This made it easy for her to commute to classes. Lauren and other students felt safe in the tranquil community of Macon, and because of this, Lauren had no problem making friends with fellow neighbors in the complex. One of the neighbors that Lauren held dear to her was a classmate of hers. His name was Stephen McDaniel. Lauren occasionally saw Stephen, however, he was always alone and was commonly seen as the loner type with the socially awkward communication skills. No one knew who he truly was behind closed doors, and despite Lauren seeing Stephen as a friend, Stephen saw Lauren in a completely different way. Stephen was a cold individual who didn't have many friends. Close friends who did associate themselves with him stated that Stephen loved explaining how to pull off the perfect murder. In fact, he was obsessed with murder and stalking his attractive neighbor, Lauren. These two combinations turned out to be a lethal mix that ended in a horrible fate. During this time, Lauren was dating 48-year-old David Vandiver, a senior staff attorney with King & Spaulding's Discovery Center in Atlanta. Lauren often emailed David expressing her paranoia of someone entering her house when she wasn't home, but she couldn't tell who it was. At times, she felt like someone was watching her and began to question whether the safe city she lived in was so safe after all. On June 29, 2011, Lauren's sister, Caitlin, attempted to make contact with her repeatedly, but Lauren never answered. Caitlin began to worry about her sister's well-being. She knew that Lauren was consumed in studying for the Georgia bar exam, spending the remainder of her time alone at home. Failing to receive calls and text messages back triggered fear in Caitlin, as she was aware that her sister always carried her phone with her at all times. After reaching out to family members, Caitlin alerted Lauren's good friend Ashley Muller, who lived down the street, and instructed her to visit the apartment in hopes of locating Lauren safe at home. It was now late in the evening, and Lauren failed to answer the door. Ashley was able to make her way into the apartment with the help of a spare key, only to discover that Lauren was missing, leaving her phone and purse behind. Fearing for the worst, Ashley immediately called 911 and notified the Macon City Police Department. The following footage was documented by Macon investigators inside Lauren's apartment. Lauren was scheduled to move out that same weekend and was in the process of finding a place with her boyfriend. However, this seemed anything but the case, as all of her personal belongings had been untouched. Ashley, with the help of her boyfriend Garen, was able to gather a late-night search party, one which included Stephen, Lauren's murder-obsessed next-door neighbor. Time was ticking and left investigators with no other option than to declare Lauren missing. 
Just as detectives were in the middle of searching for evidence of foul play, a breakthrough was made after garbage bins beside the complex had been emanating a smell of rotten flesh, an unforgettable smell easily identified by officers. As soon as they carefully inspected the bins, investigators pulled out a heavy black garbage bag. Inside of this bag was the mangled torso of a female. The Giddings worst fears became a reality after they sat down to read an online Macon news article which stated that a torso had been found in Lauren's apartment complex. Screaming and crying, the family knew it was Lauren's dismembered body. Lauren's father, Bill Giddings, drove 11 hours from the family home in Maryland to Macon in order to get a precise answer regarding the discovery. Those 11 hours driving straight to Macon on his own were agonizing and something that no parent should ever have to experience. DNA on the torso and a DNA sample taken from Lauren's father confirmed it to be the 27-year-old, which led officers around Macon to begin searching every crevice of the city to find the remaining parts of her body, going as far as searching every little piece of trash within the city landfills. Police didn't have any luck, but they needed some solid evidence before the case went cold. Several pieces of evidence inside Lauren's apartment were taken back for examination by investigators. Pieces of carpet were ripped up where blood had been found. Fingerprint samples were taken off the doors and walls, but the main piece that tied everything together was the apartment bathtub. In the following crime scene footage, investigators were able to use luminol, a chemical that glows when introduced to the iron in hemoglobin, a protein in red blood cells. By using this, officers were able to detect an abundance of blood in and around the bathtub. It had become quite obvious that whoever murdered and dismembered Lauren limb from limb did so inside of her apartment. With little signs of a struggle to enter the unit, it seemed that whoever killed Lauren was someone she knew. So officers began questioning close friends and acquaintances. On June 30th, Stephen was interviewed by a Macon news station. During his one-on-one -on -one public interview, it is noticeable that Stephen acts calm and collected while answering questions, until the reporter informs him that a torso had been recently discovered. His entire demeanor changes from seemingly normal to a man who was soon to be on the verge of a mental breakdown. I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, any, had you seen anything there? Are you okay, sir? I think I need to sit down. Okay. Macon police were able to make a second breakthrough in the investigation after entering the apartment complex maintenance space. Investigators knew that the dismemberment was an incredibly messy job that required a lot of cleaning. However, none of this could have been attainable without a special tool. Upon entering the maintenance storage room, officers found a Stanley hacksaw that had small fragments of blood and tissue embedded in between the teeth. Lab reports were able to confirm that the tool found was indeed the instrument used to dismember the body. Officers were able to clear the name of friends, Lauren's boyfriend and neighbors, leading them to a temporary dead end in the case. With a lack of leads, police knew they had to search surrounding areas, so they began to enter neighbors' homes. Investigators eventually turned to Lauren's neighbor, Stephen, who had previously been questioned and identified as a friend that was part of the victim's search party. Stephen complied with officers and allowed them to enter his apartment. Upon entering, officers began rummaging through his items until Stephen confessed to an unusual hobby. Stephen explained to officers that he had a copy of the master key belonging to the apartment complex and would enter residents' homes to steal items, specifically condoms and women's undergarments. Officers now saw Stephen as a primary suspect in the case and charged him for burglary, giving them a second opportunity to question him in the murder of his neighbor. Once in police custody, investigators discovered scratch marks on Stephen's abdomen, as well as a pair of women's underwear in his drawer and packaging that belonged to a Stanley hacksaw. A laptop belonging to Stephen uncovered disturbing searches that had been recently made, such as nude Lauren Giddings, molest sleeping girl, escape prison, choked unconscious how long to wake up, how to erase browsing history, and much more. A video camera found in Stephen's bedroom captured one piece of footage timed on the same evening that Lauren was murdered on June 26th 2011. The following video filmed by Steven shows his attempt at stalking Lauren by filming into her bedroom from the outside. Steven was also found to have kept numerous images on a flash drive, many of them being child pornography. 
Investigators now had a lot of evidence to pin Stephen to the murder, but now it was time to hear his side of the story. Macon officers spent hours interrogating Stephen on the death of Lauren. A two-hour questioning session was recorded and placed online for the public to view. Stephen became practically unresponsive with officers, sounding numb and lost with each answer. Eventually, just about all he could say was, I don't know. Wrapping up questioning, officers leave the room only to capture footage of Stephen sitting perfectly still for five solid minutes, staring at the camera, not making a single noise. Police eventually came to the natural conclusion that Stephen was responsible for Lauren's murder and therefore charged him with it. Stephen's trial took place at Bibb County Law Enforcement Center. A plea deal was set if Stephen agreed to plead guilty and give a detailed confession to the death of Lauren Giddings. In April 2014, Stephen confessed in front of the court to entering Lauren's apartment at approximately 4.30 a.m. Stephen then stated that he stood over Lauren, watching her sleep until she woke up, terrified to find the tall man in a black mask standing over her. For 15 minutes, Stephen proceeded to violently strangle Lauren with his bare hands. In an attempt to save her life, Lauren tumbled off the bed and struggled to get Stephen off of her. Lauren was able to rip off her attacker's mask only to realize it was her friend and neighbor, Stephen. In shock but completely subdued by Stephen, Lauren begged him calmly saying, Stephen, please stop. But Stephen refused to listen and continued to strangle Lauren. Once she was deceased on the floor, Stephen dragged her body into the bathtub and left the apartment for the duration of the day to search ways to get rid of the evidence. Late that same evening, Stephen took the Stanley hacksaw from the maintenance unit and used it to dismember each of Lauren's limbs, dumping her limbs two days later on June 28th. Stephen became obsessed with his neighbor and former classmate, coming to a realization that both of them had become recent graduates and were bound to move out in a short time. Stephen did not want Lauren to leave his life for good. Sexual assault had never been proven during the event, and Stephen denied raping Lauren, stating she was wearing the pink running shorts when she died, and I never removed them. They were found on her torso just as I had left them. Investigators have been unable to unearth the remainder of Lauren's body. However, the search continues to this day. Investigators were incredibly lucky to have discovered Lauren's torso due to the fact that the garbage man had been late to pick up the resident's trash that day. Had he been on time, Lauren's torso would have been discarded far away from investigators. Stephen could have slipped through the cracks and possibly have gotten away with the brutal murder. Thankfully, luck was not in his favor. Stephen McDaniel was sentenced to life in prison and is currently eligible for parole in 2041. The Giddings family did not want Stephen to face the death penalty. Lauren's father, Bill Giddings, stated, We just don't want him in our thoughts anymore. I hope he lives a long life in the worst possible way. Stephen was incarcerated in Georgia Diagnostic and Classification State Prison in Jackson and has recently been moved to the Valdosta State Prison in January of 2016. This will be his final location where he will remain behind bars either until he is released or until he dies. A memorial mass was held for Lauren with the help of the Macon community. Hundreds attended in support of the Giddings family. Lauren's friends and family continue to keep Lauren in their daily lives and actively work to keep her memory alive. That's all for this episode. Thank you for watching, and if you'd like to learn more dark and disturbing topics, please be sure to subscribe to my channel now, and I will see you next Wednesday.